Our story of the Edgerton Harry Potter Festival starts at the Depot Cafe on Main Street. The owner was trying to think of ways to boost business when he had the idea of organizing a Harry Potter themed festival, but the idea just seemed too big. The next morning though, fate gave him a little push. A woman who brought her daughter in for the first time and she was looking into the pastry case behind me and I offered to help her and uh, asked the little girl what she was looking for and she was looking for a Harry Potter chocolate frog. And I thought, gosh, that is more than just coincidence. That is just, we're on to something. I figured that was a sign that I need to move forward with the Harry Potter Festival. The idea wasn't just big, it was explosive. The first year the festival drew 5,500 people. That doubled the city's population. The next year, over 40,000 people came. And this year, the festival organizers predict over 100,000 people will come. You know, that's more than people, more people than they're at a Badger or Packer game. You know, having all them let loose in town at one time, it would be a, it would be a challenge. Despite these crowds, the organizers said they had already lost almost $100,000 on the festival. They said since it was such a good thing for the community, Edgerton should help pay for it. They handed the city a list of 27 requests. The list included things like fireworks, a corn maze, new light pole fixtures, advertising, shuttle buses, porta potties, and free printing and office space. Obviously, you wouldn't provide something like this for other festivals, but um, I'm just a little bit concerned about what the cost would be. A partial estimate put the cost at almost $200,000. Last year, the city only spent $7,000 on celebrations. It's a lot of money, and there's stuff that the city really could use that money for. The organizers insisted the festival was worth it because local stores would do so well that weekend. But only a handful of people in town owned stores, and other businesses said the festival would actually hurt them. It was just a lot of my regulars, which support us throughout the whole year, and not just, you know, for a weekend said, you know, we're staying away from downtown. We're not coming downtown. I think the problem is, is because it's just becoming this big extended thing and nobody pays attention to the businesses that I don't really have a lot of retail, so it's not going to bring people in to buy. They're not going to come in and buy a bunch of shampoo and hairspray when they're in, hair, you know, in town for Harry Potter. With the scheduled closure that we have, or proposed closure that we have, it would mean closer to 275 people that wouldn't be able to receive care in my office. As a small business owner, especially in Edgerton, that's a big deal. Especially when we try and contribute to a lot of the local um, community funds that are out there, whether it's gifts for kids, whether it's the schools, whether it's youth football, baseball. We really try and be good um, ambassadors for this city. Another thing, a city like Edgerton doesn't make anything off of all those extra visitors. It relies on property taxes for revenue. Plus, the festival organizers wanted the city to waive its regular fees. You're correct there with not getting a direct benefit from it. The, the only thing that, well, one of the few things that can benefit the city is businesses maybe do better, maybe keeps them in business longer, maybe make more investment in their business. Just indirect effects like that. Um, nothing directly comes to the city as a financial gain that we can show as a revenue. The city council held a special meeting to consider the organizers' requests, but they just couldn't justify spending over $200,000 based on a perceived indirect benefit to the community. To try to determine how it helps out certain individuals, taxpayers, or the city as a whole, or businesses, there's really no exact formula to figure this out as far as how much money can we get away with spending on something like this to where we're kind of at that point where it's best benefiting the city. They unanimously voted down every request that went beyond what the city provides to other festivals. We know things need to be done and we know people can't afford to have higher tax bills. So to, to spend it on something that may not benefit the city is usually one of the items that does not get considered. So. One of the organizers was there, but didn't say anything during the meeting until it was all over. He was very polite, though. Um, I just want to thank all of you for calling the special meeting. I do appreciate it, taking the time, putting the notes together, having the discussions, putting 
your homework into. I want to thank all of you that have come, business owners, citizens. Uh, we understand it can be a burden to citizens and businesses and the city, obviously. Uh, uh, so I really appreciate uh, all that you've done for us. Thank you. And with that, the organizers decided to leave Edgerton and the city got to keep its $200,000 and gained the renewed faith of its taxpayers. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Smolski.